Hey YouTube, this is TCA Gaming. Um, I've got another PSA Returns video. This one is pretty cool. It's not like newer product or Japanese. I think the majority of it is actually Wizards of the Coast Hollows. In fact, it's one of the bigger returns that I've had in a while. I've got one, two, two and a half boxes sitting beside me. Usually I have other people's cards on these orders, but this one, I didn't want to get anything mixed up uh, since other people send a lot of WotC Hollows in through my stuff. So I, I usually set my WotC Hollows aside and I send them all off at once so this order was like just completely mine hopefully all these certs are in order let's see 893 894 okay so they should all be in order I got a lot of nines a lot of eights but there are some really good tens in here in fact there's some really valuable ones um, and they're probably gonna be pretty random until you get to the end and then there's a lot of skyridge stuff but it's all reverse hollows so let's just go back and look through them because I, I gave these to my wife said sleeve them up I want to be surprised and uh, I kind of previewed some of it in the list from the grades so I know that there are some good tens in there we're gonna start off with this base set 2 Zapdos I have a lot of trouble with base set 2 getting gem mint tens but overall you know what let's go ahead and start that background up a nine is still a really solid grade there's a nine on the vial plume anything that I opened up that was from my own stuff uh, I probably just stuck in you know this this order to have sent out uh, I pretty much grade every Charizard now. A lot, some of you know that. This is a 1, but there's a market out there for a PSA 1 Charizard. It's not as high as the 9s or 10s. I mean, there's no way, but you know there is a market for the 1s. It's got a 9 on the Mr. Mime. There's first edition Pinsir. Got a 9 on it. Jolteon pulled the 8. Here we go. We got us a 10 on Hypno. Not a tough card to grade, but any Watts PSA 10, that's really good, even if it's unlimited. This Charizard pulled a 6. Gengar with the 9. Ooh, check it out. Another 10. Got Polyrath from base set. <clears throat> Pretty sure I already have that one. It's a really it's really not that hard to get on the Polyrath. Snorlax PSA 9. This would probably upgrade one in my personal set. I have a tendency to get really low grades on Snorlaxes. <clears throat> and I think this one may have had a shot. But looks like it was a little bit off center on the back. Usually the corners are really rounded when they got like whitening. <clears throat> Alright, Articuno got the eight. And we'll start putting these in a box. Got another vile plume, mint nine. You can tell I didn't sort these. I just kind of stuck them off to the side. Well, here's a couple newer ones. We got a Charizard from Evolutions and Nine. And a five, apparently. Uh why did I get a five? Kind of looks like they made like it's got like a line going down the middle. Maybe that's why I got a five. I'm not really sure. I don't think I would have sent it in if it was terrible. Base set two. Here we go. Nine on the Blastoise. That's a good grade. Eight point five on Venusaur. Don't really like eight point fives. They just kind of get on my nerves. But it's still a really solid grade. I mean, I've gotten a lot of seven point fives recently. And those are more annoying, but they kind of look unique enough where I like it. Here's a base set 2 Charizard, near mint, mint 8. Man, I passed up on a 10 for like 750 bucks, and I'm kind of regretting that now. Here's another base set Charizard, a 5. So we've got a 1, a 5, a 6. Here's a 7. And there's another 6. So we've got two 6s now. This is a first edition Spanish Alakazam, pulled the 9. It's not too bad. Here's a Shining Celebi, Mint 9. Koga pulling the 9. Then we got Giovanni also pulling the 9. Here we go, we have the special Gray Star Jigglypuff 8. That's actually one of the higher grades I've ever gotten on this card. Uh, I don't have a 10 of this one, so I'll be looking to add a 10 soon for it. But I do have a 10 of the Pikachu. I paid a premium. It was like $800 or something stupid high for the 10 on this one. Um, 9 again is a really, I mean, that's a really good grade for the Gray Star Ivy Pikachu. 10, you know, is pretty tough too. I'd love to have the unpeeled one in like some kind of graded holder. There's another Hypno at 9. Got the first edition Zapdos Mint 9, many of you know. It's a universal set error where it's got like an evolution box. No hollow corner on the Zapdos. On the Unlimited, there is Corrected, and there's an Error, and then there's also the Galaxy, 1999-2000, and then there's the regular Galaxy. There's Venusaur, 
Mint 9 from base set. Charizard, Boundage Cross, also got the 9. Dragonite, first edition with the 8. Man, I've missed on this card so many times now. I've, I've probably pulled, what, 2 or 3 9s and 2 or 3 8s in videos. I'm ready to get 10 on that one. There's a 9 on the rest ram, and this is the black version, not the gray. I don't know if you can tell very well from the video. First Dead Lapras, an 8. Tough card to get in a 10. Got an 8 on the Haunter. Still working on the first row, we have a Houndoom Mint 9, first edition. And this is just like the regular one, like it does, doesn't have any hollow down here. I know some people collect like the ones where it's all hollow. I have a few myself, but I put them in a PSA case half the time I forget. Here we have a Charizard first edition Spanish Mint 9. I think that was a pretty much a correct grade for this. It was one of those ones where the hollow bleed kind of come through on it, so it'd be tough to get 10. Didn't have that same appeal. 7 on this Pidgeot, not very good. 8 on the Vaporeon, pretty satisfying grade for that card. You got a 9 on the Espeon, you got an 8 on this Venomoth, Kabutops with the 7. I think some of these I might have had set back in a personal collection and I was just like, eh, I don't feel like looking at them. Let's just send them all and see if we get some 10s and, you know, I kind of struck out. So, 9 on that Electrode. This char Dark Charizard got a really nice swirl right there. Mint 9. First edition Magneton, Mint 9. Alright, on to the second row. And there we've got five rows to go through. Another Lapras, 8. Here's a first edition Haunter. The last one was an 8, that one's a 9. Kabutops, the last one was a 7, that one was a 9. Got a 9 on the Raichu. 7 on the Ditto, 7 on the Muck, and then 5 on the Hitmonlee. It went really low right there. Some of these I might not have looked at. 8 on the Ditto, 9 on the Unlimited Jolteon. I just like Jolteon, so we're going to set him in the background. Ooh, I like that Moltres too. First edition and Mint 9. Got a Chansey with the 9. Mewtwo with the 9. Just put a Jolteon back there, so we'll leave this one out. Uh, random Drowsy Reverse Hollow, 9. I think this was the Dragonair that I had pulled from a pack that I thought was heavy, but it was not. Uh, pulled the 9, still a solid grade, which was right because I think I saw down here where, you know, that Nick right there was going to pull away from it. Inevitably, there's about no way that was going to get a 10. There's a Hound Door, Mint 9. I think that was the one that I pulled from the Southern Islands pack. Got Politoed, first edition, nice swirl up there. Mint 9, another good grade. Sabrina's Gengar, I've yet to get a gym at 10 on any of those. like that little swirl right there. I pulled a few 9s out of packs. Giovanni's Persian, another tough 10. Got an 8 and a 9 for that one. Mr. Mime, another 9. Another Politoed, pulled the 8. Mrs. Golduck, another tough card to get in at 10. That's an 8. Lieutenant Surge's Firo, a 9. Check it out, another Dragonite pulled the 9 on this one. Probably because of centering. You're not going to get any better than a 9 with that kind of centering right there unless you just regraded 50 times until you got it. Ampharos with the 9. Dark Vileplume with the 10, I like that. Oh, missed on the Rainbow Energy, which I think if we're... Yeah, there's a line right across there, so 9 is definitely going to be the highest that, that one's going to get. So got a nice swirl in there. Put it in the background anyways. Dark Doug Trio with the 9. Dark Hypno with the 9. And if you guys ask me about first edition hollows, in general, I don't like going below $35 PayPal invoice or $40 on eBay for any PSA 9 first edition holographic card from Wizard of the Coast. I mean, to me, it's just not worth it. I mean, you're getting a holographic card that's basically packed fresh, and it's already graded, and you're going to get it for less than the price of the booster pack itself. So... For me, there's no way I'm probably going to go below 35 even though you can find these cards probably for about 25 bucks. PSA 9 is a really, really, really good investment, in my opinion, for holographic cards from Wizard of the Coast because you get a lot of bang for your buck. I mean, if you want to try and pull this and then grade it at Mint 9, there's no way you're going to find a pack on the po open public market 
and pull this card fresh out and be able to grade it for $25 or even $35. But that's usually my floor just because I can replace it if I really need to. But so if any of you guys ask about these cards and you know I quote you $35 on a Dark Hypno or a Dark Doug Trio plus shipping or you know something like that. Yeah, I'm not going to match the lowest eBay price card because to me it's worth more for me just to put this in a box and let my PSA 9 sit there and accrue in value because PSA graded is about half of that cost all to, you know in itself and you would have to submit it with other cards as well. But I'll, I'll move on from that. We've got Here Comes Team Rocket, Gem Mint 10. Man, I was needing this card for my collection and then I've had four of these run through my hands since I needed the one. And uh, it's a really nice card. It's not that easy to get in PSA 10 in the Dark Gyarados, but that's my fourth one in like the past month. And here we have a Dark Slowbro, Gem Mint 10. So now we're hitting on some of those 10s. These must have been from a box that I pulled or from someone's collection. I remember I bought out a few collections that had these in their boxes. There's the Dark Golbat, Golbat Gem Mint 10. Got the Dark Alakazam, another tough card to grade. And the Magneton, this is the one I really wanted in Gem Mint 10. But uh, it got the 9, still a solid grade, probably replaced the one that I have there now. Dark Blastoise also pulled the 9, tough in a 10, really uh, sought after by some collectors, but I believe I bought a 10 recently. Dark Dragonite, another tough one to get in a 10, but PSA 9, really solid grade. Um, probably going to stick it in a box with some other PSA 9s that I really like. Here we have a Salamance EX, Mint 9. Good card. Don't really collect the EX series that much, so probably get sent on to eBay. Rockets Mewtwo winner, Mint 9. These were pretty tough to get in a 10 uh, once the sealed packs ran out. I mean, you could get sealed packs pretty readily on eBay for a cheap price, but now you can't so much anymore. Here we have the Electabuzz Reverse Hollow. This is not the winner, but it does have a double swirl. You can see the swirl there and the swirl there. Tough to get on these cards because you can't get two down here. But that swirl is almost perfectly on there. And maybe if you want to see the bottom a little more, you shift it up. But Gem Mint 10, I think I've already got one in my collection, so I'll probably sell that one. Got a 9 on the other one that I sent in. Here we've got an Entei. For me, man, this card is tough to get in Gem Mint 10. Same thing with the Pichus. I sent in probably 50 of these daggum Pichus, and they... They just always come back nine or eight or seven, and I pick out the best ones that I feel like I have. I mean, at one point I had over 500 of these things, so I had a lot to choose from, but I just whiff on them. And one card that I did break the streak on this submission was this, Birthday Pikachu. I've never gotten a PSA 10 Birthday Pikachu back from PSA, and I've submitted probably 50 of these <clears throat> as well. So finally, I got some 10s. I got a 10 here, and then the next one was a 9. And then it went back to a 10 again, so I got two 10s. And then another 9. And guess what? I got a third 10 on the birthday Pikachu. So that was really nice. Probably sticked them back in my personal collection. If you're wondering about value, I picked one up maybe six months back for about $200, and then I noticed they jumped about $300, and I'm not really sure where they're at now. It might be even more because, I mean, this. I think people are finding out how hard some of the Wizards of the Coast promos holographic cards are to grade. I've graded a few of these in Gem Mint 10, none lately. Um, I think on this submission, the two that I sent in got nines. This is a really super, super tough card to get in Gem Mint 10. I sent in a bunch, I think, on this submission. In fact, I sent in almost 200 of them on one submission. Uh, we're going to see how it does. I didn't even look at the cards. I was just like, I'm sending them all in. Maybe I'll get some 10s out of it. But you can see on this one, I got a couple not eights, nines, and there's another eight. Here's another nine. These were all the best that I had. I mean, I had hundreds of these things to choose from. I might not have went through all of them, but I went through, you know, a handful, and I sold the rest as excellent, man. Same thing with these Venusaurs. I had tons of these Venusaurs. I recently submitted, like, 11 of them or something like that, all directly out of magazines. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll get a 10 out of it. Pretty expensive to find that one in the Eevee in PSA 10. Cool Porygon's pretty expensive as well. It's not insanely expensive though. Dark Persian, this one is starting to gain traction. I used to have uh, close to a thousand of these as well, but I sold, I pretty much sold them all. And now I ask like a you know stupid high price on eBay, like fifteen dollars for the regular card. I mean it's like a five dollar card or was for the longest time, but because I'm almost out of them, I'm just raising the price until I can get, find some more. But I did get a 10 on that one. And then this one got a 9. 
And then check it out. I actually got three in a row. Jim meant to him. So I got f I went four for five on that card, which is pretty unheard of. So those might go back in my personal collection because I think these are going to get harder and harder to, to grade in Jim Mint 10. Aerodactyl, the pre-release, another one really tough to get in Jim Mint 10. I have graded some of the black ones uh, Jim Mint 10 before, but eh, you're going to find out. I'm putting all these in the background for a reason. I did, uh, I got a lot of nines on this one. Really tough. In fact, that one was an eight. Let me go ahead and start putting these back in there. Uh, here's another one. Well, yeah, there's another one. It looks like we're back. We're on to some Sky Ridge reverse hollows now. So overall, I was kind of happy with some of those grades. I mean, I got tens on the Pikachu and the Persian, but you know, I missed on the Eevee and the Venusaur. But you know, that's a few that I get to knock out for my collection. Here we've got some Sky Ridge reverse hollows. Probably complete out some of my personal sets. I had a couple minty sets that was just sitting in binders. And Jim Mint Pokemon, he'd come by. He almost bought them off of me, but and, and so I let them sit in binders forever. And he had said, you know, why don't you just grade those things? And so I decided to grade them. Most of them come back between eight and ten. So I think it was a pretty nice set overall. And I did the same thing with Aquapolis and Expedition. I have basically every holographic card of the Wizards of the Coast graded now, and that basically and that includes all the Reverse Hollow sets, starting with Legendary Collection. It's been, you know, it's kind of costly, but at least now I know, hey, I've got a Mr. Mime, and it's not actually in mint condition. You know, I've got one that's at a six. Probably some reason for that, something that I missed. So let's work on, you know, I can work on replacing it. I'm not one of those guys who needs Gem Mint 10 on everything, but, you know, if I have a 10, I'm going to keep that over a nine. And then as I grade cards along the way for myself, because I grade, I mean, you guys know I grade a ton of cards. You know, if I have a nine in my collection and I grade a ten, I'm gonna re I'm gonna just replace it, swap it out, and then the nine will be what I put up for sale or put into some other type of collection that I'm working on. Looks like that electrode was Sky Ridge, but the rest of these are looking like Quapples. So got plenty of cards to go. Got a full row and about two thirds. I'm not sure how tough some of these are because I haven't really dove into trying to get a full PSA 10 set completely on this stuff. Gem Mint Pokemon, I'm sure he knows a whole lot better, you know, which ones are really tough to get in Gem Mint 10. I remember there was a, an Exhibition Skarmory that I got in PSA 10. I didn't realize that was a tough card to get. And someone had messaged me and was like, hey man, you know, I'd like to buy this. I think he was offering like $700 for it. I'm like, All right, maybe I should look this up. And yeah, apparently it's just, it's like a really low pop expedition holographic card that usually has print lines in the holofoil. So it's no Typhlosion or Gamma or something like that. But it's just one that I don't have to no longer grade. I can just put it back and not have to worry about the 10. There's a seven, not seeing as many tens with these trainers and commons and uncommons. I'm ready to get to the final row with all the Skyridge stuff. I like the trainers, but for me they're more like a, I gotta have them just to fill in the set. Some of them are nice. Like I like the Undersea Ruins. I'm trying to think of another one that I like. Oracle's kind of cool. I don't know if that's because it's already expensive as is and I just noticed it, but the, these cards like these cubes, they don't, they don't really appeal to me. I like, I like the different artworks for Pokemon Fan Club, Pokemon Park, I like that one. Back in the day, you could find Expedition, Aquapolis, and Sky Ridge packs all over the place for like a dollar a piece. And nobody would buy them. It was just like, you know, it was just such a flood of that, that era that was on the market, or at least around here there was. and You know, I always picked up on the fact that when I had, when I bought collections from people, you, know, you didn't see many of the e-reader cards. You know, they're a lot lower print. And so when that supply that was there ran out right when I first started collecting, the stuff went up pretty quick. I got one of Dave and Adam's last Sky Ridge boxes, because they had, they had them things forever. And I bought mine. I can't 
I don't know for sure, but it was probably like 2012 or something like that. I got one of their boxes for 250 bucks, and you know they just slowly started increasing after that. I think the last one I had that I sold probably about 2,500. And you know, now they're sitting at the last one sold for what 15,000. All right, now we're on to that Skyridge set. See if we can get any tens on these beginners. Oh, there we go. We got a 10 on the Articuno. There's a nice one. I'm going to set that one in the background. Got a 10 on the B drill as well. That is partial that one, so I'm going to leave it out. I like those Watsy hollows a little more than the reverse hollows. Crobat and Dugong. And yeah, we've got the Flareon. That's a pretty nice pickup. Got the Fortress. Ooh, here's a good one. Got 10 on the Gengar. Oh, and also back to back, got 10 on the Gyarados. Like all three of those, let's put Gengar in the middle, that way the water Pokemon are separated a little bit. Jolteon as well, there we go. The Jolteon off to the side. That glare off of the Articuno. Kabutops. There's a Lydian Gym at 10. And a Machamp. Doing much better on these Sky Ridge returns right here at the beginning. Bag Cargo with the 10 and the 9. And you got Magneton. 10 on that Magneton. Kind of curious to see how this upgrades my set. Nido Queen, Queen with the 10. Uh, looks like we don't finish with Sky Ridge. I'm seeing some more pre release Aerodactyls, but it's a different version. It's got Politoed, Polyrath. Ooh, this is a long one. I've got 10 on the Raichu. There we go. And 10 on the Raikou as well. Boom. There's a Rhydon. Starmie. I know that there's a, one guy that I communicate with that I'm pretty sure this Starmie is like one of his favorite artworks ever on any cards. Got 10 on that Steelix. Oh, the Umbreon got the 8. Oh, that's, I can see it looks like it's got some rounding issues. That's probably why that happened. Ooh, 10 on the Vaporeon. It's got 10 on the Vaporeon and Jolteon. Umbreon got an 8. The Flareon had a 9. Let's see what we have for these Aerodactyls. So this is the brown stamp. The other ones were the gold stamp. No, wait, this is still gold. Here's the brown. I don't know if you can tell. It's gold, brown. And then also this has the Cosmos foil. That's why you can see the swirl. And this has like the original Starry or Galaxy, whatever you want to call it. But they don't specify the difference. Uh, more Mint 9s. Mint 9. Let's see what we have here. Got 3, 6, 7. Mint 9, Mint 9, Mint 9, Mint 9. You'd think with you know, all these Mint 9s, I would have got one Gym Mint 10. But I did not. I'm not sure why Mill Tank was stuck in the back. So I whiffed on the Aerodactyls. I think I got one other set of Aerodactyls in the game at PSA. Maybe one of them will get to 10. We'll just have to wait and see. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you see something that you want. As always, just post a comment if you're on Patreon or if you are watching this on YouTube, send me an email. That way I can get back to you on whether or not the card is still available. But don't forget to like and subscribe and be on the lookout for the next video.